The president now confirming he was giving a test for coronavirus. He made that announcement during a news conference just a short time ago. I had my temperature taken coming into the room. So did we. <laughs> you did? Good. Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Let's compare. Do you want to compare? You did all of us, yeah. Okay, good. Well, we're, that means we're all looking good. Uh, you also took, I also took the test you last did, night. Yeah. And I decided I should, based on the press conference yesterday, people were asking, did I take the test? The result, I don't know whatever it takes, a day or two days, whatever, whatever it is. They send it to a lab. The president's own test comes as the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise exponentially. And keep in mind, as we've heard from experts, the more tests that are able to be done, those numbers will rise. The death toll stands at 50 now. Uh, that includes a new case, a new death uh, confirmed in New York this morning, an 82-year-old woman who also had emphysema. We know that more than 2,400 Americans have now tested positive across 49 states. Our team of reporters at the White House and across the country is covering all the angles of the coronavirus pandemic. We do want to begin our coverage at this hour at the White House. Kristen Holmes was in the room at that coronavirus briefing. And Kristen, uh, just like you, the president, we learned, had his temperature taken uh, before he entered that room. That's right, Erica, and we heard it was not just President Trump, that his entire task force before they had a meeting. And I want to note, uh, we actually watched one person get turned away from the briefing room before the task force came out after they saw the temperature. Apparently, the White House Physicians Office took this person's temperature multiple times, uh, and it was too high for the CDC guidelines, so they escorted him away. He wasn't allowed to, test, to go to the briefing. Uh, but I really want to note something here about President Trump's saying that he got tested. There are a lot of questions about this. First question being when exactly did he get tested? The reason why I'm asking is because we're hearing from the White House doctor last night, just before midnight, issuing a memo saying that President Trump and Vice President Pence did not need to get tested. Yet this morning, President Trump saying he got tested last night. Another big question is Vice President Pence was asked if he was tested. He said that he heard President Trump announce he was tested and that he had not been yet. He was going to go straight to the White House physician, physician's office after this briefing to see if he should also get tested. A lot of questions there. Remember, Vice President Pence is the second in command. How did he not know if President Trump uh, was getting tested? But we are asking about the timing of all of that. And the last thing here to really go into is that so Social distancing. We have heard from numerous health officials who say that if you are being tested, if you have been exposed, you need to practice social distancing. We have not seen President Trump do any of that. Moments before uh, this press conference, he tweeted out a picture that showed him around a conference table where he looked uh, pretty close to the members of that task force. So whether or not he's going to start practicing that, whether or not he's going to stop shaking hands, as we noted that he did on national television yesterday multiple times, uh, we asked him about this, and this is what he had to say. People come up to me. They shake hands. They put their hand out. It's sort of a natural reflex, and we're all getting out of it. All of us have that problem. Uh, somebody comes up to you, they put their hand out, you probably tend to just shake it. And we're all getting out of that. Shaking hands is not a great thing to be doing right now, I agree. But people put their hand out. Sometimes I'll put the hand out, you don't think about it. Uh, people are thinking about it more and more. We have to think about it, it's important. But no, we all have to get away from I mean, getting away from shaking hands is a good thing. Yes, yeah, so he says getting away from shaking hands with good things. Again, yesterday we saw him shaking hands with numerous officials. Of course, we'll be watching to see if he follows those public health officials' guidance and starts uh, using his elbow or not touching uh, other individuals, as we saw again yesterday. Uh, and the other thing to note here about that testing was that President Trump said he wasn't sure when he was going to get the results. So a lot of questions there as to how he could not be sure, reaching out uh, to the White House on this, trying to figure out exactly what happened between yesterday and this morning when he said he had, in fact, been tested. Oh, we appreciate you making the push for those answers. We know you'll let us know as soon as you hear back. Kristen, uh, thank you for that. And before I let you go, um, one of the other points that came up, and you and I were hoping that maybe we would get an answer before the press conference, I'm not sure that we did, was to clarify what's actually happening with Google after the president touted a big national website that Google was working on, and then Google pushed back and said, this isn't really what's happening. What's the word from the White House today? 
I think this is so important. Vice President Pence tried to clarify this. Uh, he essentially said that it was going to be an announcement at 5 p.m. tomorrow with more details on this. He said uh, that there was going to be a pilot program that was going to start uh, in the Bay Area, which is all the reporting we had leading up to this, and then eventually Google was going to try uh, and get it to be a national program. But really, look at what we have been so worried about, what, the Amer what Americans have been so concerned about, and is that testing. The fact that there has been limited access, that the development was so slow when it comes to testing. That was all on the administration, it was on the rollout, on the various health departments uh, within the government. Now you have an offer of a website that they're saying is in the works, that it's going to come any second. It's going to help people who have so many questions about how they can get tested, where they can get tested, uh, what exactly they need to be doing. And it wasn't true. It's not for the nation. It's not something that they can go look online and try to figure out if they have the symptoms, should they be moving forward. And so this is really a, another situation here in which we've seen a one hand saying one thing, one side saying another. And particularly when it comes to that testing, the fact that we still don't have answers on it, the fact that, that he had, we have someone coming out and presenting something uh, that is, again, not what it seems, that is very hard for the American people who are just trying to grapple with this. That it is. Kristen Holmes, appreciate it as always. Kristen, thank you. Also with us, CNN senior medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen. So, Elizabeth, we heard from Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, today at the press briefing. One of the things he said that really stood out to me to put this in perspective for folks at home is he reminded us we have not reached the peak yet in this country for this outbreak. And he stressed again protecting the elderly will be a challenge. What should we take away from that statement, especially about not being at the peak yet? Uh, so, Erica, I think what we can take away from that is that some of the, I'm going to dare to call it, uh, kind of happy talk that has happened over the past couple of weeks, that maybe this wasn't so bad, and, and, and sort of downplaying things, they are no longer doing that. There is a full recognition that the worst is still ahead of us. They're not predicting how bad it will be, but they are saying that the worst is still ahead of us. And to that second point, and this is extremely important, and this was discussed at the press conference, we we are not worried about the 20-year-old or the 30-year-old who gets coronavirus, because chances are, if they're healthy and don't have underlying medical conditions, chances are that chances are overwhelming that they will be fine. The, we're concerned that that 20 or 30 year old is going to give it to uh, their nana or their granddaddy, as Dr. Adams, the Surgeon General, uh, put it. That's the worry. It, the worry isn't about young people. The worry is that they're going to spread it to older people or to people with underlying severe medical conditions. As we look at to what has changed in the last 24 hours, the fact that the president declared a national emergency, that frees up a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. Where does that actually go? What does this do in terms of fighting the pandemic? Right. So I don't know if they've allocated exactly where they want all that money to go, but we heard about one place where that money needs to go, and that is to make sure that nursing homes are doing what they're supposed to be doing. There was a mention that some nursing homes don't have a great record with infection control. I mean, I've looked at some nursing home inspection reports, and, and and frankly, your jaw kind of drops because there appear to be all sorts of problems with infection control. And so that takes money. You've got to get people to go in. You've got to get people to explain to them what they need to do. They need to take measures. So that's certainly a place where that money would go. Elizabeth Cohen, always good to see you. I appreciate it. Thank you.